And so I think that uh, it's through very, very small decisions made by each of us that this evil gets eradicated from the earth. Hello and welcome to a very special bonus episode of the Anything But Quiet Time podcast. We get to talk to one of the guys behind the production of the movie, The Sound of Freedom. Yes, indeed. Neil Harmon is the CEO of Angel Studios. And what really is impactful after watching the movie is a quote that you're left with at the end of the film, which states, there are more people in slavery today than at any other time Mm. in history. And that that's staggering to yeah. me. Yeah, especially because we, we think it's a modern age. We've mm-hmm. moved past that. And yet there's so much going on behind the scenes. And so what can we do? What do we do? How has this information not only impacted audiences, but the people behind the film itself? Yeah, so we talked to Neil Harmon about that, about his reaction, as well as even uh, it motivating political leaders of different countries already. Hope you enjoyed the conversation we had with Neil Harmon. Why was it important when so many other studios, from what I've read at least online and reports, they said no, and you guys said yes? Why was this important for you? I was talking to a studio executive from Lionsgate that said that they looked at this film and they wanted to distribute it, but they didn't know how because they distribute their films through influencers, through the news, through celebrities and other people who are important in society. And they didn't see a path to get all these influencers on board around this topic because it's such a difficult topic. And what, and this, this executive said to me, when, when Angel Studios signed Sound of Freedom, this is perfect because Angel Studios is a studio that's direct with the people. Like the people are the supporters. Angel Studios is named after the people. And so we don't have to deal with all the, you know, the influencers and the decision makers of society. We just work directly with the people. And then the people allowed this movie to rise to the top to where the elite and the decision makers and the media and the press had to address it. And then that message has spread throughout the world. You said you're in Houston. I just flew through Houston um, on Sunday, actually, coming from El Salvador because the President Bukele signed an agreement to eradicate child trafficking from his country. And he premiered Sound of Freedom, is the first one in Latin America to premiere Sound of Freedom. This is the kind of impact that the angel investors and and those people who support angel studios are having on the world they, they they were the ones that got this movie out they were the ones to fund the marketing they were the ones to talk about it and make sure that everybody heard about it knew about it until no one could ignore it so it's it's pretty exciting and we felt like our studio was built specifically for this kind of purpose to get a message out that nobody else would so you you obviously have the um, interest in wanting to do it and the passion for making sure that something like this gets out there. But the reaction that you have gotten, even now a political leader of a different country is influenced by this movie. Uh, did you expect this reaction at all? So there's two answers to that. Yes and no. So the yes is, is that our films get selected by the Angel Guild. It's a group of over 100,000 people who have financially supported, invested in previous projects. And these people get to decide what we distribute next. Uh, We don't have that control here at Angel Studios. The executives don't. We're replacing the Hollywood gatekeepers with the people. A random sample of these people watched Sound of Freedom and the score was so high, we knew that the angel community would get behind this film. And we knew that there would be a big showing on July 4th for this film. Now, it would take more than the angel community to reach the world. So the the surprise to us was how big the global conversation became around Sound of Freedom and how fast that happened. It, it was just, it blew us away how, how how big this became and how fast it, it got there. So I would say I wasn't surprised by the Angel community's reaction. I was surprised at how, how much of the global conversation centered around this film in the month of July. And how much people are willing to talk about it. It's uncomfortable to talk about this, but it's so necessary And we're grateful for being able to kind of share that platform that has been created now that God has used to, all right, let's address the obvious elephant in the the room. It's interesting that this has gotten, speaking of political, so much drama attached to it through press and people bringing up conspiracy 
conspiracy stuff and uh, a direct quote, I think, from The Guardian was paranoid story, which is bananas because this is a true story. But I loved how Caviezel addressed us at the very end of the film and how you guys were allowing us to be able to pay this forward for people who might not be able to afford the ticket. And I'm not spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen the movie. I'm not ruining anything. <laughs> he, he talks about the the most important uh, people that we need to be focusing in on are the stars of the movie, uh, the stars of the story. It's the children and trying to help redirect anything that we may feel politically or whatever else drives this, which I think the enemy is hugely a part of trying to keep these kids captive. Absolutely. We're to focus in on these babies. So, so what are you guys doing? What can we do to come alongside, Neil? I think it's really important to see, to view this and how big it's getting as a win for these children. I think that uh, the reason this became bigger than we thought is because it is bigger than us. And God cares for each of his children and um, has had enough of this being in the darkness. When some light is shed on it, uh, really amazing things happen. I heard a report in Texas of a law enforcement official who watched the film and then immediately launched classes for young girls in their community to help educate them on how what because modern trafficking is actually way more sophisticated than even the film the mm -hmm. film is shows an abduction but uh today this happens through social media it happens through the web it happens through bullying there are ways and and it can happen very close to home but for people that you actually know and so this this lady she watched the film she started class Classes in her community. She's raised funds to, so that anyone in their community can watch the movie and done a number of other things because they just are personally taking it into their hands that they're going to eradicate child trafficking in that community. President Bukele wanting to premiere the film and apparently the president of Ecuador and I think Costa Rica and other Latin American countries are jumping on board. This impacts them greatly. The, the, the children that went missing on the border, a large percentage of those children were from Central America. And so this is impacting them so much. From our perspective, our job at Angel Studios is just to build awareness. That's what our job is, is to build awareness and then it's every single viewer job to decide what they should do. And they'll have inspiration just like this person in Texas or like President Bukele in El Salvador. Those those seem like big things because they're officials, but there could be little things mm -hmm. that, you're, you, that a viewer feels inspired to do. It could be just looking out for their niece or nephew. It could be looking out for the neighbor's children. It could be building a closer relationship with their own children. And so I think that uh, it's through very, very small small decisions made by each of us that this evil gets eradicated from the earth. I, I couldn't agree more. We recently shared a quote from a woman named Meep Gies, and she was part of the team that helped hide Anne Frank and her family during the Holocaust. And I wasn't familiar with her story before watching a, a show about her life, but she lived to be about 100, and she would go around teaching, and she would end with this quote at every gathering she was at, most of, I would imagine, schools and things like that, that even a secretary, a housewife, a teenager can turn on a small light in a dark room. Neil, um, you obviously wanted this. The whole Angel Studios, you know, are passionate about the project and the success to get the awareness out. Uh, but at the same time, every viewer can think about how they can make a difference is there a way that you've been able to, if the dust has settled a little bit, I'm sure you, clearly you just flew to a different country. You're still working hard on it. And they're about to release it internationally. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, but it, if there's ever been moments where the, the dust has settled, you got the chance to reflect. What what is uh, How has it changed you? That is a really good question, Carter. I think one of the ways in which it has changed me is I've always believed in the in the industry that we're in that there's power in storytelling. Steve Jobs once said that the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller because the storyteller sets the values and the vision for the generation which is to come. I've always felt that. And the reason that we've even fought for these 10 years to build this company is because we want better stories for our children and our grandchildren. But seeing that happen and seeing that way that a story can cut through lies and deceit, 
people are are identifying the problem. They're identifying who the enemy is through this story. They are also identifying who their who their true allies are in this story and mobilizing. You know, I've I believed it and I've said it, but seeing it happen, it for me is just breathtaking. Like when we tell a story well, it can change the future of our world for our children and for our grandchildren. And that for me is incredibly inspiring. It's reinvigorating. It gives new energy to to double down. Like th- this work is not easy. And um, having people accuse you of false things, of conspiracies or of political ambition or those types of things. It's not easy. It's not fun. But then seeing the actual way that the story cuts through things, mm-hmm. it just, it gives me new hope and life and energy to to continue this, continue carrying this baton for as long as it is, is mine to carry. I mean, if we could encourage in you, you're following in Jesus' footsteps with the storytelling aspect, right? He's just sort of ultimate storyteller. But he also didn't have to explain himself. So I appreciate you keeping the main thing the main thing. I haven't read anything from Angel Studios releases a report and answers all of the, you know, the people out there. Again, I really appreciate you just letting the story be told and cut through, like you said. That's a really good way to put it. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you for your time today, too. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on. Great to talk to you, Carter and Michelle. Likewise. God bless you guys. 